Not to fight because there are many people who want to invest. Oh, good attitude. <laughs> <laughs> Have you met any investors or journal or venture capitalists in Hong Kong? I uh, had a few meetings, yes. And what do you think compared to America? Because I have an opinion about that. The people I met already have a, a foot in, a, in Silicon Valley in general. So there are people who are here and also in America. I've been pitching to raise money in the UK and here. In the UK, they ask you really smart, difficult questions, but they will give you, as an individual, 25,000 pounds. In Hong Kong, they ask you not so smart questions, but they're willing to give you five times that, four times that, because they have the money. So it's very interesting to see the difference between the markets. And I, you know, the fact you're here, it's a little bit sensitive because you're, you're in a way, are you not worried that your brand is connected to, in a way from a branding perspective, you're connected to something that could be perceived to not be good by business people? Not the smart ones. Yeah, there's a lot of stupid business people in this town with money, right? We want, we want smart money. So. Okay, so let's go back. I, I wanna, I'm, I'm curious about the bigger story. So you have, let's put fire chat aside. So you have this, this dream. How are you going to connect all of the, the mesh network? How does that work? Is that, I mean, you know, is it all about crisis? Is it all about emergency? Because, you know, you've had various events, whether it's Fukushima in Japan. When, when Fukushima happened in Japan, Twitter adoption rates through the roof. Uh, is it all about, you know, finding, is it all about crisis and people finding a meaning in something? Because, you know, it was, like I said, Twitter in, in Fukushima, and you're here in Hong Kong. So is, is that what it requires in order for people to adopt the concept of peer-to-peer? -peer? I mean, you know, in Hong Kong, you mentioned peer-to-peer, -peer, and I guarantee you the second word will be BT. Yeah, BitTorrent, right? So is it, is, and that, you know, in Hong Kong, people like BitTorrent because you get movies for free. So you said something important, I think free is the key word. So obviously crisis and events like that can uh, bootstrap and uh, boost the adoption. But I think what's really going to make a difference for FireChat is all the, what I call the unconnected masses. So people who will have a smartphone but don't pay for a data plan because they can't or because there is not the, the infrastructure is not available. Uh, FireChat will enable all these people to be able to message completely for free. And the more people we have on the network, the more often we can actually route your messages for free. So when we introduce the private messaging feature, which doesn't exist yet, um, we will be, I mean, we could potentially manage for you to message or send content to people without using uh, your data plan all the time. But isn't that, WhatsApp got adoption because people felt they were sending messages for free. I know if you look at the maths, it's not actually for free because you pay for bandwidth, but the concept was, if I send an SMS to you on another network in Hong Kong, it would cost me $2, Hong Kong, right? Along comes WhatsApp, I send you a photo, it costs me nothing. I know I'm paying for my data, but perce perception is important, right? It's free. So you're saying you're gonna create a perception that it's free, or that's what's gonna be the adoption, it's about being free. Yes, and the first place where people will really uh, perceive the difference is the places like India. So all the, um, yeah, but in, in India, um, the people who want it for free don't have smartphones. They do. They do? No, you can buy a, a Firefox OS phone for $33. You can buy an Android one for $100. But paying uh, 4 or $5 a month for a data plan, it makes a big difference. So is your, when you talk to business people, let's talk a bit about the business side. Is your model to go and sell you get your kind of pre-embedded, so when the when the when these guys sell their product, their hardware, your fire chat is part of it. That's one way. Uh, the other way is just people passing the app from one phone to another. Okay. And the incentive in places like India is is just I can chat to you for free. I think free is going to make the difference because, yeah. uh, and I uh, I learned that with Skype. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Free always win, no matter uh, what it costs, even if it's very little. Uh, free will always win. So if you, if you move away from fire chat, I'm, just, I'm still curious about this whole concept of peer-to-peer. -peer. What else do you think you can do off the back of this? I mean, if you're building, you're, from what I understand, and from you know, your partners in the business, you've got partners who've built ways to connect technology 
and use uh, internet connectivity efficiently, right? Your Stanislav, right? Stanislav, yes. He yeah. Did the, he did the congestion control for BitTorrent. So okay. So he made BitTorrent more efficient way to distribute content. Right? Absolutely. That's why when you use BitTorrent and you download a very large movie or a large file on your computer, you don't feel actually that it's using um, your bandwidth. You can keep on doing the things you were doing before. It doesn't disrupt your experience. So can that be replicated on a smartphone? Completely. Because at the moment, if you download a movie and watch a video, you know, nothing happens in the background, right? So what it does, it, the, the, I, the normal and traditional IP protocol only exploit like 80% of the, the physical capacity of the link. Mm. And with uh, the protocol you developed, you can actually exploit the additional 20%. So you can keep on doing the things you are doing, and now you have 20% more available bandwidth that you can use to pass more info. So there's a lot of talk about the Internet of Things, right? There's a talk about, I mean, there's a company in Hong Kong today that just launched on Kickstarter. And they're doing, you know, controlling your air conditioner from remotely, right? There's the company that Google bought, right, Nest. So how do you, if you're providing this, this network, are these other things that people are doing, you know, smart what are it, watches or fitness or whatever, shoes or whatever, is that going to plug into your, your network? We started already to open the network for these devices, and the first partner we made with, uh, with a company called The Tracker. They do a small device that you can put on your, in your wallet, uh, on, on a bag, um, on, um, on a bike, and if uh, this item gets lost, then the, um, the device and the tracker starts to broadcast the signal. Like Angelina, you needed that device just yeah, now when you got to us say, all to look at your bag. For your bag, it would have been, yeah. uh, you would have found it so, so, fast. You know, so I'm curious, though, because there's a lot of talk in the industry about, you know, you can control your aircon from remotely, or your fridge, or your hi-fi or you know, your shoes can tell you how fit you are. Is, is, are you part of that or is that all not really your area? For the home, I don't know if we are really the best uh, network. Um, what we can do for the home is, uh, because often if you only have one base station, is extend the range of reach of the internet easily. That we can do it, um, and I think it, people already use the app we made for that. The, where it's more interesting is for the sensors that we eventually have in the, in the garden uh, to know when you have to water your plants or these kind of things. Um, I think then our network can uh, yeah, make a difference for uh, vending machines also. So how do, I mean, if you walk into a town that's kind of, in Hong Kong, the, the tel telcos are, are controlled by the real estate agents, right? The, the people who own the real estate here own the telecoms companies. Mm -hmm. And they are not, they're rather reluctant to introduce new technology. So when they see you come along, you say, hey, your customers don't need to use your network, they can use ours. Is there not a lot of resistance? I think it's complementary. You always need a backhaul and an infrastructure to go back to the internet uh, if you want to connect to the rest of the world. So it's, uh, I think it's complementary. It's complementary. So off, apart from FireChat, do you, are you going to open source it and allow other people to develop? Is it, is it just you or are you going to say, right, yeah, here's a platform, uh, you know, anybody can go out there and build something off the back of it. So we, uh, we have already almost 2,000 developers who manifested interest to develop on the platform. And it's something we are going to open at some point. So you have an SDK for developing off the back of it? We're going to release first an API that people, so that way people will be able to test the network and then after we'll be in the form of an SDK for you to embed into any app. So when you raise your second two million, will you ever ask the question, how are you going to make money? No, because in Silicon Valley, you don't think about making money uh, right away. Yeah, I heard a very good, uh, there's an acronym, right? Have you heard this acronym? URL. Okay, it's a good one. Do you know what it stands for? No. Ubiquity first, revenue later. It's a good one. It's, it's a good one. one. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I tried that on British venture capital, so they don't understand it. I, I think if you want to disrupt an industry, actually, yes, it's better to focus on the technology and the and uh, users and uh, really... Uh, so making money is not an issue? No, because once you get adoption and you are broadly spread, you have tons of opportunities to generate revenues. That concept only works in San Francisco. It would not work with money people in Hong Kong. I promise you. Probably. Probably. That's why I left uh, Europe also. Yes. 
So, so what's the next step? When you go back to, to San Francisco, I'm going to open the questions to the floor. What's the next step? What's, so you go back, you go, that was brilliant. I love Hong Kong. I want to move to Hong Kong with other 599 French people that arrive every month. <laughs> and I want to be in Hong Kong. I like French people. I've called Napoleon after all. So, yeah, when, what, when, when did you choose uh, your name? Well, did you choose your name when you were born? C'est pas ma choix, connard. Anyway, my parents did, because my grandfather was Irish, and he liked the fact that Napoleon fought the British. My father made my mother pregnant. So he was a fan of the French, or an early fan of the French? Yes. Okay, that's a good reason. That's a good reason. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, what do you do? I mean, after this, is like a, you know, it's all very exciting. What happens when you go back to San Francisco? More work. Yeah, but like what? Like what happens? You, you fire chat becomes the next WhatsApp. You go, that was a nice trial. Let's open another app. Let's raise another million. What, what happens next? Oh, uh, I mean, I, I'm constantly fundraising, so I close my next round, and, um, and maybe I say, okay, now uh, I have to to be present in uh, in Asia, in Hong Kong, and uh, all the places around here. That's yeah, that's what I have in mind. Do you want to look for the next revolution? Do you need revolutions in order to build your business? Um, I don't think so. No? But if revolutions can help, um, and if you can help people for the good... Actually, that's one question I wanted to ask you last night was, because it's a, a mesh and it's a network, is this something that like uh, you know, military forces would use? Is it a tool that would be useful if you were at war? And I mean this is a serious question, I know I'm it's joking. It's a serious but question, but mesh networks were primarily developed uh, by the military people to actually have a way of communicating on the, on the field, yeah. So do they have a, a, a tools equivalent to fire chat? They, if you're, if you're on, a, you know, on a field and you're attacking somebody, is there a, an equivalent? They most probably have tools, but uh, hardware. The strengths of... Uh, the open internet technology is uh, it's a software, it's an app. So yeah. basically you can turn every device into an internet node or and create this mesh network dynamically. That's, that's, that's the strength. And you don't need to pay or buy any, any extra device. So should you spend your days talking to charities and people go and help, you know, Haiti or New Orleans or wherever it was? Is, it, is, it about, you know, is this a, a solution that will help crisis? Is that what your real customer is? It's, it's, a, it's, you know, the Médecins Sans Frontières or, you know, Red Cross or is that who the real users are? That's a potential uh, other market for these technologies. Uh, I think uh, it's better we, we get to a certain scale before we really step into this, uh, um, I mean, in, in this market because then you have, uh, I mean, it, it also has a lot of implications when you start to work for, uh, uh, I mean, in emergency, to prevent emergency situations or be able to communicate in, in emergency situations. What do you mean? Like what? Like, uh, imagine you have a, a, a crisis, a, a, a natural disaster, and then all the communication system don't work anymore. Have you heard about Ubuntu? I do. Hasn't Ubuntu launched a... Uh, originally they were a website where you could report um, crisis in Africa, right? Ushahidi. Ushahidi, sorry. Ushahidi, yeah. Rushahidi, they have launched uh, a product, hardware, right? Was it called Box or something? No, they the launched the Brick. Brick. Yeah. Is that not the idea that you go into, you know, crisis situations and this Brick provides, uh, you know, a mesh network? Is that what it is? It needs access to the cellular network. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's not doing what you're doing. It's not as clever as you. It's different. Okay. okay. Let's take some questions from the floor. Anybody have a question? Uh, I'm not going to walk all the way over there. Yeah, come. Hi, uh, I'm Dikai, uh, computer science department faculty from the Plus. University of Science and Technology of Hong Kong. Um, fascinating stuff. Uh, what I'm curious, have, have you run into or do you anticipate running into any of the issues with regard to uh, uh, censorship of the app stores? For example, you know, the, the app store for uh, Apple in, in China doesn't have certain apps because they're deemed sensitive. and Certainly, after this incident, Fire Chat would be seen in that light, and then perhaps in other regions that control distribution of apps. Have you run into that? Have you thought about that? Is it an, a, an issue, uh, or is it that people just install on Android where there are no controls, or the 
are, are you providing for people to uh, use jailbroken iPhones? That's comments on that. So the, 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 real, the, the real first censorship we experienced was in the US with AT&T. <laughs> <laughs> Capitalism is democracy, right? They actually uh, asked Google to remove or uh, uh, the app that enabled you to share your mobile internet because uh, then users were not able to were not obliged to pay for the very expensive thing. Uh, when you said they asked Google, did they send a legal letter saying cease and desist, or was it like a polite, Larry, could you do me a favor? <laughs> no, I think it's normal. Okay. I don't think uh, anyone from AT&T had to place a call yeah. to Larry for to remove open gun app from the store. I mean, I hope, but. Uh, and uh, so that was really the first censorship uh, I think we experienced. And uh, what was the outcome? Did they remove it? They did remove the app. So they users it. from AT&T uh, were, were coming to our website to, to install the app directly. But obviously, you less you get less visibility because uh, the store uh, gives you a lot of visibility. Um, since then, I think uh, I mean we are still on the app store in China. Uh, the which app store? There's lots. There's like 300 app stores in China. I mean, the Apple one. Okay. And we are probably on 20 or 30 other app stores for the for the Android version. So we are still uh, seeing users in China. Um, it is true that from time to time, I think the probably our server gets blocked, so people cannot uh, sign in, which uh, is weak. it's very recent. Before we didn't have any uh, account creation and. Uh, Lately, we introduced uh, an account creation because we and users wanted to have a profile, and uh, it's also uh, to use your social media account. Is it like a social connect thing, or you just use? No, you just. Uh, I to, use my email, but you use a, a username, uh, uh, the name you want to use, uh, display to other people, so it can be uh, completely anonymous, or you can decide to reveal your. And are you name. seeing any denial of service attacks? Usually, what happens in China is if they don't like you, suddenly a lot of universities start approaching your server rather rapidly. So we, uh, I mean, we've been in a lot of uh, things lately. I wouldn't comment too much. You wouldn't comment? I, uh, I have to go back to my office and uh, be with my team to really understand what's happening, so. Oh really? You've been, you're being attacked? Uh, we've seen, I mean, a lot of people uh, trying to install the application and trying to, to register, and lately uh, I know people complain because they can't register. Uh, so. Did that answer your question? Partly. If, if, if push comes to shove, if push comes to shove, and in order to remain officially available uh, within China, which means actually letting the sensors in like WeChat, would you do it? It's a good question. Um, and uh, I mean, we, we have a pretty straight answer to that. Uh, we don't want to push via chat uh, in China. What we are interested in is to push our technology and we have a lot of interest uh, from partners who want to use the technology more for uh, monetization. And uh, it's an easy, straightforward way and... Uh, I heard there's a company called Alibaba that has a few extra coins that they might want to invest in some startups, right? So, so, but, so the question is, 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 there a, is there a, do you store data? <coughs> Are you, because I mean, one of the propositions that Snapchat had was they don't store your, you know, your messages, although it's a lot of bullshit because they do, they, right? but, uh, but they pretend they don't store your messages. So the consumer thinks, you know, oh, I can send you a message telling you whatever, it disappears. Right? So I, I won't speak for my uh, uh, partner, um, business competitors or partners in the, in the industry. But for us, we, um, so we keep the messages on the server uh, for a certain time, the time that it gets rebroadcasted to uh, uh, other people who are particip participating to the same room, but after they, they disappear. So we actually don't keep information on the uh, It's not encrypted, right? It's just stay. That there's no Anybody could hack into it and take that message. There's no reason to put encryption on public conversation. Okay. I mean, it would be a silly architecture and a, a silly decision to do that, because uh, you can just create an account, go on the app, and see what people are saying. Okay, another question? All right, well, I mean, to, to sort of follow on that thinking, the, the problem with anonymous public networks is as they grow, the noise soon drowns out the signal and their usefulness declines. The usual following step for, for these sort of platforms, you're already moving towards that with a verified account, 
is to start to find ways to make them more private, more secure, and obviously today in the post-Snowden era, everything needs to be moving towards encryption. So are you, A, moving that way? B, if you are moving that way, and this mesh work is passing the message in a crowd, say we're off the, the cellular network, and it's going from my phone to your phone to Napoleon's phone to Victor's phone, trying to find its way across the crowd of people. Is it being stored on each of those phones? Is there any way, if I'm in the middle of this and I'm one of the anti-Occupy guys, that I can grab these like things? Is there? I mean, this is your your it's sort of uncharted waters here. Can you talk a little bit about you know how you're going to you know take this to the next level? So it's a very good question. Uh, yes, we have plan to do private messages and uh, when we release that feature it will be encrypted. That's your, your first question. And two, it is take us more time than the traditional uh, messaging app because everything we build in FireChat has to work online and offline. And yes, when it will work uh, offline, um, you will have a store and forward feature uh, just to make sure your message gets delivered. But it's not an issue because even if it's stored for some time on the device, I mean, it's completely encrypted. And if you don't have the key to actually decrypt that message, because you are not the person who is supposed to receive the message, it's pretty I mean, impossible for you to, even if you were hacking into your phone, to figure out what's, what's there. Next question. Hi. On the uh, encryption part, um, you mentioned that you're going to do the uh, private messages, right? But what about the, um, instead of one-on-one, -on -one, it's actually a group private. Like, for example, if if, um, if a company wants to use it within their uh, certain uh, network, and that network needs to be protect protected and encrypted, is it something within your plan so that they can use your network, for example? So we're going to start with one-to-one -on -one, one -one, private messages, and obviously we're going to make it evolve to uh, one too many or many too many. Um, so for groups, the same thing, the same way groups work now, but with uh, I mean, people who have been uh, invited to join the group and uh, with private conversations. Do you see a brand using it? I mean, would, would McDonald's use it? I completely see brands uh, rushing to get their verified accounts to actually be able to push information to uh, their customers. But are, are, are teenagers in America using it? A lot of teenagers, yeah. Really? Yeah. So it'd be a marketing channel. So you see, so explain to me, if I, sell me your channel. I'm McDonald's, I've got 10 million US dollars. Why should I spend it on you? You should because uh, FireChat means, uh, I mean, it means a lot globally. McDonald's is a global brand. Yeah. And uh, then they would be associated to, uh, to freedom, uh, to a very young audience. And I think that's but what I'm worried what they say about me. They might say something that I don't like. Can you delete it? What happens if Jay says, I don't like a Big Mac? It's full of fat. Sugar. But sugar. sugar. Sorry, sugar. You can say that on Twitter or Facebook today, don't can't you? <laughs> but I, yeah, true. I can drown it out with lots of advertising. Actually, sorry. So, on, the, on, the, um, on the security question, do you have a timeline for that? Um, so the private messaging... Uh, sorry. So the next step, so now we are into the verified accounts, the next step is to enable you to be able to, to follow uh, the people you, I mean, that are important to you, the same way you can join a chat room, a fire chat room, you can join, you can decide to follow someone you, you want to be notified when they post. And uh, after that, uh, yes, we start the work on, uh, on private messaging. And, uh, so do you, do you ever get asked though, is there a finite appetite for uh, messaging? Right, you know, we've been bombarded by Facebook, WhatsApp, Snapchat, WeChat, uh, Weixin, you know, Weibo. It's quite hard to keep up with all these things. It's, it's, You're right. It's, 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 you know, it's, it's not a point at which people, somebody snaps and throws their phone out the window and goes, fuck it, I just want to talk to people. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but that's what's happened with Facebook. Huh? Yeah, people install the app and uh, they just talk to random people because they just want to engage the party. They go, fuck it, I don't want to look at any more ice bucket challenges. I just, actually, that works to your advantage. It's like, I'm tired of seeing ice. Just let me talk to somebody. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, there must be a finite point. With all technology, there's a, there's a you know, they call it a, what is it? What, there's a turning point, or what's it called? What? 
tipping, tipping point. point. But I believe the tipping point works the other way. There's always talk about in a positive light, you know, wow, it's gone from 10,000 users to a million. There must be an inverse tipping point where it goes like, oh God, I just want to have a conversation with somebody. Um, I mean, we have to improve the user experience and bring that conversation. I mean, for people who want to have, we have people asking, a lot of people asking, they want to have a, you mean a one-to-one -one conversation without being uh, disturbed by the other No, 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 what I'm saying is the choice of ways to communicate with somebody. Oh, okay. You know, I don't know how much you've been out to restaurants in Hong Kong, but couples go out and they sit there looking at each other's foreheads because they're taking photographs, they're, they're, you know, they're chatting with each other and their friends saying, I'm out on a date with so and so and so and so and so and so and they never have sex because basically they spend the whole time telling their friends that they're... That's oh, sad. That's sad for It them. is sad and that's why our... Yeah. But I hope it's true. I right? think many people Victor, are... you know this. Yeah, I'm not having sex. I guess many people are... No, I'm, I'm pushing this on purpose. Yeah. The point is, at some stage, there's, you know, there's the next, the next, the next. I understand, but Snapchat came out of nowhere and managed to grab a small, what, a, a certain audience. As latest valuation is $12 billion. I, mean, I think Yahoo invested... Uh, yeah. Yahoo went, thank you, Jack. Chuck it into... I'm oh, sorry, I can't remember the name of the Snapchat founder. But here you go. So, isn't there a point at which people get tired of the same thing? Right? I know you're not the same thing, but it... Well, I think there's a market. You have one billion smartphone today, and you're going to have uh, six billion smartphones in the next three years. So, there's a, a, market, a huge market to be taken, and uh, there is still room for... for more messaging. More messaging, more social networking. Uh, so, will you, will you look at WeChat? Will you do what the Chinese did, and is look at... Western apps and go, I want some of that, but I'll do it better. So your advantage of becoming you know, late to the game in terms of messaging is you can go, ooh, that works, I'll have some of that. You know, people like to send each other voice messages. Funny, isn't it? It's like an old fashioned. You know. Yeah, they were all walkie talkie. Or... Yeah, so are you moving in? Would you see your app developing into the space where I could send you a voice message? I could send you a video of me running very fast, speed it up, or slow down? Yes, obviously. Uh, I mean, uh, today you can do text, and there is no reason why you shouldn't be able at some point to send a video. Uh, video. You, you can already on the local networks and uh, photos and video. Okay. Any more questions? We'll take two more. Then I think you're, you're looking. You're starting to look tired. You've been talking to too many journalists. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm good. I have a very basic question that'll probably show I'm not a tech entrepreneur, but I understand that your phone operates like a radio. Is what you said early on. But does that mean there's a geographical limitation to using it? Or does, if I want to join a chat that's in South America, does it, am I able to join it by the chat going online? Or how does that work? So when you are connected to the internet, there's no limitation. I mean, you can reach any, any part of the world. When you, um, when you are not connected, or if you're locally in proximity with other people, then uh, it's going to reach the people around you. The distance between one phone to another can be up to 250 feet. And uh, messages can also bounce from one phone to another, so it gives you like a radius of uh, yeah approximately 250 feet. Which, which radio goes 250 feet? So the um, that's um, bloggers in Japan who made a test. Uh, it was a line of sight over uh, water, uh, and uh, yeah, but don't forget Japan's a very zen place. You try to do it in Hong Kong, there's far too much interruption. I agree with you. I agree with you. It's okay. Last question. Oh, yeah. I guess the question is, can you go from the Bluetooth mesh to the internet and have that conversation go international? And then there's a company in Frisco called Tile that's using Bluetooth to track like laptops and bikes. Did you talk to those guys? So we, um, when I mentioned the tracker, they exactly they do exactly the same thing as Tile, uh, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we know Thai very well, and yeah, we are already also talking for to provide, uh, I mean, um, eventually our network to uh, to them or other manufacturers of these small devices. Not necessarily uh, tracking devices, but it can be uh, um, devices that just require connectivity from the, the RFID. Can you Not RFID. It has to be something uh, uh, linked to Bluetooth radio or, uh, or Bluetooth cell. And then as far as going from the mesh Bluetooth to the internet, can you connect those two 
and yes. then have that go international? Yes. Okay. Excellent. One last question. What's it like being a French person in San Francisco? Because you were preceded by Loïc Le Maire, right? I was preceded by Loïc, it's true. It was seismic, and he was trying to do stuff with messaging, but he kind of didn't get very far, right? I think.